few days ago I made a video about my six string guitar collection. This is a tenor guitar, four strings, and it wasn't included in that video. I'm going to talk about it now. This guitar was made in 2009 by my good friend Ian Chisholm, uh, but my interest in four string instruments goes back a lot further than that. In the late 60s, Ian and I were playing in a band in London called the Egbert Souza All Stars. It was a kind of loose, informal jug band making good time music, and we had a great time. We were joined in the latter end of the band's period by a bass saxophone and tenor banjo player called Pete Reed. Pete was a great player, and I was very taken with his tenor banjo playing, and I decided to buy one. I spent about £40 uh, from a shop in London, had a resonator made for it, and started to play it in the jug band. When I moved down away from London, down to the south coast, I joined a jazz band called the Jubilee Jazz Band. I played the tenor banjo and guitar in that band. And you can see a picture of the band here with me in it, a very young me from 1980, holding a tenor banjo. Uh, and it was the tenor banjo neck that I played that gave me the idea of, of a tenor guitar. Simultaneously with the idea of a tenor guitar, uh, I left the Jubilee Jazz Band and started to play in a rock and roll band, put the tenor banjo down. But at that point I also came across a book called the Northumbrian Piper's Tune Book. And here's the book, as you can see here. And I started picking out tunes on the banjo uh, and uh, using my fingers mainly, and then started uh, with a pick. I think I've got one YouTube video called The Little Beggar Man where I'm playing the banjo finger style. And uh, here's a clip from it, and you can find it on YouTube at The Little Beggar Man by Will Fly. Eventually, I got tired of the banjo sound. Uh, it didn't sound right in sessions. It sounded a bit crude and a bit coarse to me. So I decided uh, to have a tenor guitar using the same kind of scale length and the same fret width and depth and profile as the banjo. So I commissioned Ian to make this tenor guitar, and here it is. When I started playing it, I was still playing uh, chords and some single string stuff. Now I use it particularly for single string stuff. I started playing old time music on it. I started playing a bit of folk stuff. And then I was drawn, as I got more used to the instrument, drawn to playing 1920s and 1930s jazz and French stuff by Charles Trenet. Uh, like La Mer and Boom and so on. And it's a particularly expressive instrument. Uh, I don't play chords on it anymore, rarely. And I use it for its powers of expression, its tone and its vibrato. But I love the... Vi uh, uh. Vibrato to it. And you can bend the notes beautifully. So that's the sort of style that I play now. And it, it reinforces my opinion that actually we don't play instruments. Instruments play us. And by that I mean that we tend to respond, excuse me, we, we, we tend to respond to the, the, uh, the style of the instrument, to its sound, to the feeling of our fingers on the frets. We, and we tend to play what feels good from that point of view. So in that sense, the instrument pushes us towards a certain style of playing, towards a certain choice of tune, and so on and so forth. And uh, Ian and I did an experiment um, some years ago. He has uh, a Gibson uh, L1, I think it is, uh, and a Gibson mandolin uh, from about the 1900s. They're very old instruments. And when you play them, you start to play like Jimmy Rogers. And we actually took the two instruments to a folk club one night and played some Jimmy Rogers stuff. And it sounded fantastic because we were playing instruments from the period. And uh, that actually was where I got the idea, yeah, we don't play these instruments. They play us. They make us play uh, in a style that brings out the best in the instrument. I'm always reminded of, the, of that wonderful song by Guy Clark, The Guitar. Perhaps this tenor guitar was waiting for me in the ether somewhere and, and uh, found me.
Anyway, that's the tenor guitar. Uh, I'll put the camera on it uh, a bit later on to show you the detail of it. But the, the body is English walnut. You can see that's the body, English walnut. It's very nice, book matched. Beautiful stuff there. Uh, the um, neck is uh, uh, an old mahogany piece of a wardrobe turned into a neck with a maple stripe down the middle. Um, it's an Egyptian style bridge of, of rosewood, which is very nice. An ebony fretboard. And the tuners are very nice. They're sort of 1930s style deco, deco tuners. I hope you can see them. Uh, they're great fun. And they match the sort of the 1920s, 1930s style of the guitar. Uh, I'm not going to play it much in this video because I've got loads of, of, uh, of YouTube videos where I'm playing the tenor. So you can see it for yourself. But you can get some idea of, 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 the, of the tone and the quality. <laughs> The guitar is tuned like a viola, it's C, G, D, A, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it's particularly good because uh, it suits folk music, it suits jazz. And the thing I like about this guitar is that because I don't play chords on it, when I'm improvising, I'm not thinking in chords. And to me, that is a great limitation. Uh, I love playing jazz on the guitar, but I'm always conscious I'm toodling around the chord sequences and the chord structures on the guitar. On this instrument, I'm playing around the scales and around the melodic line of the piece that I'm playing. And I find it gives me a much more lyrical feel uh, and much more freedom. You can judge that for yourself by looking at the videos. You may agree or not. But for me, uh, the lyrical freedom I get is because I'm thinking in scales and not thinking in chords. I obviously know what the chords are, but I'm not consciously searching for chord shapes on here. I'm searching for notes that will fit the melody line and fit around the melody line and so on. And that's the, be the beauty for me of the tenor guitar. I think it's my favourite uh, instrument of all time because it just gives me uh, that freedom of playing, which uh, is great, to, you know, feeling. So there we are. Um, right, I'm going to put the camera on it now and uh, you'll see uh, the guitar in all its glory. Hope you enjoyed the video. Well, here's a picture of me on the day I got the guitar from Ian, 2009 in August. A very proud man I was. Right, here's the guitar headstock. Uh, as you can see, the lovely 1930s style tuners. Nice bone nut. Got dots at the 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, 12th and 15th and it joins the body at the 14th fret. It's a 22 and a half inch scale length by the way on this guitar. Uh, and there's the Egyptian bridge which is very nice indeed. And the uh, pegs. Turn it over, there's the back of the machine heads. Maple stripe going right down the headstock, down the back of the neck to the body. And then we, when we get to the body, there's the very nice walnut uh, back and sides to look at, uh, which is um, particularly pleasant, I think. Good English walnut. There you have it. So that's my tenor guitar.